welcome to a brand new edition of our show Sports Connect. A digital world connect to the sporting universe like never before. I'm Megha and I'll take you to a 30 minute ride in the galaxy of sports. Every week we come up with the insights from the world of sports. And this week too we have a lot more promising for you. But before we proceed take a quick look at this video. Can we get her like this? Moving on to our next segment, in trend is all about the hashtags that dominated the Twitter world. Here's a quick wrap of the trends that ruled Twitter this week. In the Asia Cup T20, Bangladesh defeated Pakistan by 5 wickets, thus booking their place in the finals where they'll take on India. Sami Sarkar was a star as his run a ball 48 was pivotal in ensuring the win. Bangladesh lost the wicket of Tamim Iqbal early in the innings for just 7 trapped in front of Mohammad Irfan. Man in form Sabir Rahman then walked in and built a steady 33-run stand with Sarkar. But Pakistan's skipper took a quick one and it went straight through Sabir to clean him up for just 14. Sarkar, however, had gotten off to a good start, something that has eluded him in the tournament until now. He went on to make good use of it as he guided Bangladesh to a comprehensive win. It's going to be matter. City have a game in hand on United, who earned a fourth successive win. Oscar Pistorius faced a return to jail after losing a final bid to appeal his murder conviction for shooting girlfriend Rita Steen Camp. Pistorius's lawyers had applied for leave to appeal to the Constitutional Court, the highest court in South Africa, arguing that the Supreme Court of Appeal had wrongly upgraded his conviction to murder. But the National Prosecuting Authority, which opposed the application, said the appeal bid had failed. Gone are the days when Bangladesh were the whipping boys of world cricket. With the sort of young pacers they have at their disposal, they've become a force to reckon with. After facing defeat at the hands of Bangladesh in the Asia Cup T20, Pakistan skipper Shahid Afridi confessed that they made too many mistakes in the match. After the match, Afridi congratulated both the finalists, India and Bangladesh. He had said that the team has to do something really special in the forthcoming ICC World T20, which is scheduled to start next week. Let's now shift our focus to the most happening social media platform for the youngsters, which makes a heartbeat zoom up to the next level. Yes, you're right, we're talking about Facebook. More in this report. Indian tennis star Sanya Mirza has said that French Open is going to be the toughest for her and Swiss partner Martina Hingis as clay court is not among their favourite surfaces. Having won three Grand Slime titles in a row, Sanya and Martina would hope to maintain the winning streak at the French Open to be held in May this year. The Indo-Swiss pair's 41-match winning streak came to a halt after the world number one women's doubles combination went down fighting in the quarter-finals of the Qatar Open last week to the Russian duo of Elena Vesnina and Darya Kasatkina. Delhi Daredevils have appointed Rahul Dravid as their mentor for Indian Premier League season 2016. Dravid was associated with former champions Rajasthan Royals, who have been suspended for two years due to betting and match-fixing charges. Recently coached the Indian Under-19 team at the World Cup. The former Indian Test captain was instrumental in grooming several young players like Sanju Samson and Ajinkya Rahane during his stint with Rajasthan Royals. With less than a week remaining for the ICC World T20 to kick off, the issue over the venue for ICC World T20 match between India and Pakistan remains unsolved. According to reports, BCCI Secretary Anurag Thakur 
had met Himachal Pradesh Chief Minister Veerbhadra Singh to convince him over the issue. Singh, who had earlier raised security concerns over the much-awaited encounter between the two rivals, said that Thakur needed to speak to the families of martyrs and ex-servicemen body. The Delhi Daredevil side, packed with the young talent of India, could not have asked for anything better. Let's slip into a short break. On the other side, big news coming in and a lot more happening. But before that, take a look at this. Cricket legend Virendu Sehwag has said that India has the perfect mix of world-class performers and that makes them hot favourites at the upcoming World T20. Sehwag, who bid adieu to international cricket recently, said the hosts have a strong batting lineup and a lethal attack. Sehwag was also all praised for India's opening combination of Rohit Sharma and Shikhar Dhawan. New Zealand's finest batsman Martin Crowe passed away at 53 this week after he lost a second battle with lymphoma. Crow played 77 tests and scored 5,444 runs at an average of 45.36. May his soul rest in peace. A batsman in a classical mode, standing tall at crease, using his feet with great expertise and playing spin and fast bowling with equal assurance. Martin Crow was a beautiful player to watch, his balance and the footwork. Widely regarded as his country's best batsman, Crow debuted as a 19-year-old, playing 77 tests between 1982 and 1995. Crow accumulated 5,444 runs in tests at an average of 45 and 4,704 in limited overs internationals at 38.55. Crow's partnership of 467 with Andrew Jones was, at its time, the largest for any wicket in Test history and remains the third highest. His innovative leadership carried New Zealand far further than expected at the 1992 World Cup to the semi finals. He remained involved with New Zealand's top players until the end, mentoring batsmen such as Ross Taylor and Martin Guptill. To beat Martin Crow was nothing short of a distinction in bowler's balance. Crow was a batsman with exceptional qualities and one of the finest ever batsmen and sharpest cricketing minds. From Russell Crowe to Stephen Fleming, tributes flew in for Martin Crow. His death 
was keenly felt in the cricketing circles, with an outpouring of tributes flowing on the social media. And now we bring to you the journey of the captain of Jammu and Kashmir's para cricket team. You will be amazed to see the way he bats and bowls in the cricket match. He is indeed a perfect example of strength and courage. Amir Hussain Loon is an inspiration for many. He was a normal guy until eight when he met with a tragic accident that changed his entire life. He lost both his arms, but it could not dampen his dream of becoming a cricketer. Over the years, Amir became self-dependent and did not let himself be a burden on family, which stood with him through thick and thin. He puts consistent efforts and never let the adversity take a toll on him. Today, he is the captain of Jammu and Kashmir State Para Cricket Team. And now. Take a look at one of the best scores in the Premier League football history. Perez has found him. Dennis Bergkamp is in, and that is brilliant. A touch of class, world class from Dennis Bergkamp. Bergkamp, oh, that's just sensational from Dennis Bergkamp. Team India's new look jersey unveiled ahead of IC World T20. The team will wear a new look jersey when it takes the field for the ICC World T20. Nike is the official apparel sponsor of the Board of Control for Cricket in India. We wish all the success to the team India for their upcoming matches. The West Indies all-rounder Andre Russell has reportedly committed an anti-doping whereabouts to Royalation. Russell, who has been named in the West Indies squad for the T20 in India starting next week, has missed three doping tests within a 12-month period. Russell, who helped West Indies win the 2012 World T20, faces a possible two-year ban if found guilty. And now from the tennis world, Venus Williams will enter 15-year boycott of the BNP Paribas Open at Indian Wells next week, following in the footsteps of sister Serena, who returned to the event last year. The 35-year-old former world number one has not played the prestigious California event since 2001, when she and Serena were booed by sections of the crowd. Well, it's time for some light-hearted news. Virat Kohli is a man of many talents. While his cricketing medal has earned him a million fans, his singing talents too are not hidden from us. After India's emphatic win over Pakistan in the Asia Cup T20, Virat Kohli was seen singing the famous song, Jo Vada Kia Wo Nibhana Padega from the film Taj Mahal that was originally sung by Lata Mangeshkar at an Indian High Commission event in Dhaka. Virat shared the video taken by Yuvraj Singh on his Instagram saying few moments back at the Indian High Commission gathering. Thanks to the official for the video party. I love this song. While we are absolutely fooled by Kohli's performance, we couldn't help but wonder if the song is a silent reminder to his now ex-flame Anushka Sharma. More so because rumours of Virat trying to win back his lady love post their alleged breakup have been coming our way ever so often. If the song is, in fact, dedicated to someone, we just hope that it fulfills its purpose. Till then, we keep our fingers crossed. And here is this wonderful video for you, bringing you some of the best shots of Roger Federer. You enjoy this video. Star athlete Serena Williams, Roger Federer, Aaron Rodgers, and Maria Sharapova managed to turn up in famous red carpet of the Oscars. 
bring to you some of the moments direct from the famous award show. Did you know is our next segment which will give you the interesting facts from the sports arena. Here are today's interesting facts. Did you know that the world's first roller coaster opened in 1884 at Coney Island, New York. It was designed by Lemarcus Thompson, a former Sunday school teacher. Did you know that China and Indonesia are the two countries with the highest percentage of wins at international badminton federation event? Did you know that the Olympic Games were held in St. Louis in 1904, first time in the United States? Did you know that the first ever internationally recognized male versus female boxing match took place in 1999 between Margaret McGregor and Louis Chaw in Seattle, Washington? Did you know that Eddie Eagle is the only Olympic participant who won gold medals at both the Summer and Winter Games? From the archives is our next segment on this day in sports. On this day in 1910, Stanley Cup Montreal Wanderers beat Ottawa Senators by 3-1. It was on this day in 1956, Mickey Wright won LPGA Jacksonville Golf Open. On this day in 1960, World's Ladies Figure Skating Champions in Vancouver won by Carol E. Hiss of America. It was on this day in 2009. Moises Alou announced his retirement following the World Baseball Classic. It's time for a short break. Lots more coming up next. But before that, take a look at this. To make a ball and a shot to win it. Down by one. Five seconds to go. Batting down middle, just what I thought. A hook shot at twelve. Johnson's The Lakers engineered one of the best comebacks in playoff history. This year's MVP, Magic Johnson, put in the winner with two seconds left. Welcome back and with some good news for the fans of boxer MC Maricom. Five times world amateur boxing champion and famously called as Magnificent Mary, she celebrated her 33rd birthday this week. Maricom is the only Indian woman boxer to have qualified for the 2012 Olympics. 
from the Arjuna Awards to the Padma Shri, from the Rajiv Gandhi Khel Ratna Awards to having a road named after her. She has been awarded and honoured many times and has become an inspiration for many. We wish the boxer a very happy birthday and a prosperous future ahead. And here is the picture of the week. I'm sure the budding athletes would love to see themselves on our show. So this is totally your space. They can send in all your sports-related pictures of achievements till date. And we promise, we'll show you those pictures in our next episode. You can send your pictures via mail. Our email ID is gdsportsconnect at gmail.com. Remember, it's connect with the case, so don't miss it. Now it's time to wind up the show. But before going, we leave you with this question, which is of course our sports quiz. And you must be curious to know about the winners of the last episode. Well, the correct answer is T. Yohannan. And the winners are Ashwini Patil from Mumbai and Dhananjay Varshe from Kolkata. And today's question is, Who are the winners of the single title of French Open Lawn Tennis Tournament held in Paris in June 2010? Your options are Rafael Nadal and Francisca, Pete Sampras and Serena Williams, Rafael Nadal and Justice Hannah Harden, and Pete Sampras and Venus Williams. You can now tweet the answers using hashtag SportsQuiz on Twitter and Facebook and we'll announce the winner's name in our next episode. Also, you can mail us your answers on dailysportsconnect at gmail.com. To connect with us on Facebook, Twitter and YouTube, you can follow us on twitter.com slash dailysportsindia. Also, you can like our Facebook profile page at www.facebook.com slash sports and subscribe to us on YouTube at youtube slash sports. For bloggers out there, you can now share your articles with us. We promise that we'll post the most interesting ones on our DD Sports blog at ddsportsindia.wordpress.com. You can send us a feedback about the program on ddsportsconnect at gmail.com. Hope you like our show. We'll meet you again next week with some more interesting and trending news from the sporting world. But before going, we'll leave you with this amazing video. Fill the moments with this video and keep watching DD Sports. We'll meet you again next week, same time, same day, only on your favourite sports channel, TV Sports. Till then, goodbye, take care and stay connected. Rahul Dravid has walked out. Bad delivery and punished. It's a high pull toss and Rahul Dravid has latched onto that one. Oh, that's high again. Has he got the distance?